Good morning, y'all. Excuse my appearance. I just wanted to touch down and say this. So everyone's talking about, you know, Quiet On Set, um, the new documentary from the ID channel, talking about, you know, what happened on Nickelodeon shows and stuff. Um, and everyone's, one question I keep seeing, I've seen for years, everyone's like, why is Dan Schneider not in jail? Why is he not, you know, charged with anything? And after reading Dan Schneider's statement, like in response to this documentary, he pretty much told us why he's not in jail. Okay. That man's not in jail because if he goes down, all of Nickelodeon's going with him. Dan Schneider owns Nickelodeon. Okay. In his statement, he said something along the lines of, well, if all these things that were happening that I'm being accused of allowing to happen on the sets of the show was really happening. Guess what? The parents, the teachers, the executives, they were all there watching it happen and no one said anything. So if it was inappropriate, then they should have said something. So he's basically saying, yeah, yeah, I did that shit. But you know what? All of y'all sat there and let me do it. Some of you participated in it. So if I go down, you're going down. The whole network's going down. And that's my theory on why Dan Schneider is not in jail yet. But um, after this, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some more arrests made. I can't wait for part two tonight. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the channel. So today we are back with another hot tea. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the channel. So today's video, we are talking about the new documentary, uh, Quiet On Set. So this series actually let me know or like it really make put things in perspective to the fact that kids are literally the people like the most weak people in our societies in a sense that they don't get protection or anything like that when she talks about like the life these kids actors go through what they want set and the abuse of their producers and their executives so we're gonna go ahead and listen to what other creators have to say about this topic and then we come back and hear my thought on what i have to say about this do you also find it crazy that drake bell who went through some really horrific trauma and and i really hope that he can find peace i hope that everybody else who dealt with that can find peace and i hope that the people who victimized him and his co-workers rot truly but isn't it crazy that he took that pain that was inflicted upon him and he turned around and did it to somebody else later on and this is not something that just happened with drake bell i feel like there is a psychological phenomenon and you can watch a couple episodes of svu and see this as well that people who are victims are blinded by their own victimization to the point where they inflict it on somebody else and either they don't realize it or they're using it as some type of justification. I don't know. And you can see this not only on an individual scale, you can see this on a mass scale, on a governmental scale, if you will. There are entire groups of people, historically and now, that have gone through some of the worst, most disgusting trauma and destruction that any human could possibly imagine. Worse than what you could imagine. And they are victims of that, but they turned around and they did it to somebody else. Does that make them any less of a victim? Is Drake Bell less of a victim because he did it to somebody else? Absolutely not. But I think sometimes, the rest of humanity, the people who aren't dealing with that, feel so much sympathy and empathy for these people, for these groups of people, that they give an excuse for them to do it to someone else. And I don't think that that's right. Drake Bell deserves healing. He really, he deserves to be able to deal with and heal from the trauma that was inflicted upon him. But he still doesn't get an excuse to do it to somebody else and he must deal with the consequences of that situation because the person that he victimized, they're dealing with it, right? We cannot live in a world where we allow a victim to victimize, where we feel so bad for them that we just let them run rampant and do whatever they want and, and continue the chain that is being created. I wanted to talk about this really disturbing video that was on Dan Schneider's YouTube channel that I just don't feel like people talk about enough. It wasn't featured in the documentary and I don't believe it's on his YouTube channel anymore, but I just want y'all to see for yourselves. All right, let's watch. <laughs> y'all see that? <laughs> so do y'all see how her first reaction was just anger? Like, she was upset, but then she immediately had to cover it, and she started twitching. This poor girl was twitching, and she's trying to laugh it off like it's so funny, but you know she was pissed, but she knew she couldn't express that, and she couldn't be honest and say, you, you know, I didn't like that, because of the power that Dan wielded.
Yo, I always felt bad for this poor girl. I always felt bad for Victoria Justice. I just never understood the barrage of hate that this girl got, you know, um, after Victoria's, you know, all the drama with Ariana Grande. And I remember I even did a video like breaking down all the drama a few years ago. And I just always felt bad for Victoria. Not gonna lie, I'm really curious to hear Victoria's story, but she's of no obligation to disclose her story if she doesn't want to. I just feel like her and probably the rest of the cast of Victoria's are probably under that NDA that Jeanette McCurdy refused to sign. If y'all remember, Jeanette McCurdy said that she was offered an NDA and she did not sign it. She turned it down. And I just fear that the rest of these guys may have actually signed that. There are also rumors that Victoria wasn't as present in the last two seasons of Victoria's because she refused to sleep with a producer. That's a blind item. Um, I haven't looked into it enough, but that's been going around. Um, and there was a whole lot of stuff that came out from that that it really kind of messed with her career. And if that is true, then it would make sense why she dealt with so much hate and why it seemed like her opportunities were not as plentiful after Victorious. And considering what Ariana went through on the show, the rabbit hole just goes incredibly, incredibly deep. I hope that if Victoria does happen to want to speak up, I pray she feels empowered to do so. But if not, I just pray that she's seeking healing and is doing well because that video always ticked me off. That video always annoyed me. Kid actors, so if you grew up watching Cut and Sam, Victorious and all those nice, all those kid actors, now they've all grown up and they are telling their story of what actually happened on the set while they were filming when they were about 6 to 12 years and 13 years so they talk about the abuse and all those things that the producers and the executives allowed to happen while they were filming um all right when i watched the show i could see the hurt in some people's eyes and it made me feel awful and regretful and sorry um, I wish I could go back, you know, especially to those earlier years of my career and bring the growth and the experience that I have now and just do a better job and never ever feel like it was okay to be an asshole to anyone ever. And when Drake and I talked and he told me what had happened, I was more devastated by that than anything that ever happened to me in my career thus far. Mm. And I told him, I'm here for you. What do you need? Which Drake mentioned in the show that we watched last night. And next, I heard that he went to court when this guy was being tried, Peck. And when Drake walked in, he saw 50 people sitting on the side of the courtroom supporting Peck. A lot of them pretty famous. Of course, Drake was devastated that that happened. And, and even more disappointing, 41 of those people wrote letters for Peck, character letters, praising him for who he was and asking for leniency. And they knew that he was guilty. They knew he had confessed to some degree. Mm -hmm. And they still did this. It's, just, it's baffling that adults would do that. Yeah. And I don't know if people know this, but Drake's mom, a lovely woman, who I stay in contact with this day, she came to me at the time and she said, Dan, I'm not good with words like you are. And would you help me with my speech for the judge? And I said, of course, and I did. And he ended up going to prison and serving his time. And yeah, that was, probably the darkest part of my career now this topic is not new it has been going on for, like for several years now a lot of people have been saying about this schneider i guess nobody really like chat him or anything like that and he's still not in prison i mean the man said from his mouth that if he's going down he's going out down with the whole network so but the thing that i really really find bad like i find so offensive is the fact that all these things were happening while the managers the the parents because when you're they are this age most of the kids that are on the set most of the kids that are on the move have their mothers are the managers so if you go on a set with your daughter and then they are giving her ketchup to do all these things and like have all this 
references in a scene you the mother that you were behind the scene somebody told his mother this is the scene nobody did anything about it that's where me my problem with the whole i know the man did bad thing but my problem right now is the fact that the mothers allowed it to go on and the fact that they were even allowing most of the kids to spend some days with the executives in their own homes i mean don't you feel some discomfort knowing that your son or your, your daughter is somewhere and they were all under age like from 6 to 13 years they are so young that's the thing that anytime that ariana Grande is in the news it, it just put me back from all these things that she was exposed saying that the things that she do is nice or the things that she does are good i mean it's not good to collect somebody's husband but let's just see what this documentary is even approach she's not on the documentary but then she was in some and um, cut and then she was on iCarly also just from the one one came that he quit the show because of the abuse from dan schneider but then he just talked about his problem and that was all that was all nothing happened to him he still kept producing movies still kept being around kids now people were saying he's a pervert allegedly i've not confirmed anything like that but people were saying she's he has a foot fetish because most of these uh i 101 and then victorious and kind of some you can see like some similarities in the scenes whereby like most of them are playing with their feet there's a lot of feet 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 going on in that a scenes which is so weird and the thing that i also think about is that i watched most of the uh, movies growing up and i don't remember seeing them is it not weird I, I don't remember seeing them but then now that i'm looking back at the tiktoks and then at the documentaries i'm like this is really really disturbing because to allow your kids to be around people pervert allegedly like that it exposed them to early age of grooming and then there's a girl on the set of Sam and Cut and then I Kali, I think that she have gotten married to one of the producers of one of the uh, set workers when they were filming that show later on. Well, now she said that she they didn't get together until she turned 18. Now we all know the code for that. That's the thing, the kids are not protected. So all these men groom them and then they end up wifing them and then they go out in the world to be miserable and then start doing things like that. After watching the Quiet On Set documentary, seeing what they allowed in Victorious, it makes Elizabeth's relationship with her husband who worked on the set even more alarming. So her husband, if you don't know, it was like the music composer for that show, Sam and Cat. And he's worked with Dan Schneider for years. They're very good friends. Now he saw her growing up. So he saw her on set when she was like 15, 16. And she claimed she was always infatuated with him and always had a crush on him, but that nothing happened until she turned 18. Now, after watching the documentary last night, is that true? I don't know. I always mention, because he's in his 50s, age gap relationships are weird when you knew that person as a teen. It's different if you're like 27 and you met when you're 27, you're 50 or whatever. But no, he worked with her on the show when all this stuff was going on, right? Not to mention he's super cool with Dan Schneider. Now, Elizabeth doesn't talk on the documentary at all. Actually, no one from Victoria speaks out, but they do show the clips. And you can argue that Victoria's probably had the most amount of, wow, that's a kid's show and that's in there. So, wow. Um, you have apologized. You have apologized sincerely. And in me watching the apology, you can really, really see that he is actually like sorry because like I said, maybe it's some conscious thing that were happening to him and he was not really aware of the things that he was doing. So when this set uh, documentaries came out and then he looked back, because sometimes when things are happening around you at the moment, you don't really you don't really notice until you are doing the playbacks and then you know that oh this is a bad thing, this, this doesn't look good. But then I really want him to apologize again to the kids personally. And then everybody is saying, why is having gone to prison? The man is not going to prison. We all know that for sure. Because if he decides to go for to prison, he will not want to go alone. And he said it himself that if he's going, 
down he's going with down with the whole network because it wasn't only him that was producing the video uh, mo uh, movies there were people involved there were executives there were vice executives there were screen coordinators talent coordinators set designers all these people come together to make a movie so maybe his face is now on the billboard with all these accusations but then he's not the only person that was that had the hand in it everybody in the network had a hand in it so i would get the fact that he's saying that if he go down he's going down with everybody because he's not the only person that have to go down for certain things like this because when he did his part i'm sure there's another person that had to approve the work for the work to be approved now i'm i don't really blame him that much i've already said it i don't really blame him that much i blame the parent for allowing this to go through first of all the kids are busting out their ass working which in a certain way is child labor your kids are not supposed to work and feed you but then they are doing it so the only thing that you could give these kids is protection and then the children their parents fail them the parents really really fail them i mean sometimes the fame and the money cloud our judgment and then they blind us to see certain things but then to talk of it after all these years and then i saw another post i think on instagram where the one of the mothers from the people uh, victims were siding with the man like was siding with schneider about the fact that all the things that he did he did his work and all those things that's what i'm saying so certain such a parent like that no do you think even if he went to see somebody like intentionally making his son or his daughter to do bad things like to do acts like this you think he's gonna say anything about it he's not gonna say anything about it because he wants his son to be in the limelight and then there's a cost that you have to pay that's the thing there's a cost that you have to pay to be inside this hollywood and nobody talk about the dark side this is one of the dark side so you have to be morally like strong in the to be in this work like it's not easy and then they end up all these boys that have gone through this like situation they grow up and then they become parents too they become like the abusers they because since they were uh, uh, exposed to it as a kid and they don't go through therapy start healing themselves talking about it knowing realizing that this was the things that were done to me when i was a kid and it's really really bad and then work on it heal they will grow up and be like the same person that they abuse like abuse them so if these people are bold enough to talk about it i feel like all the parents of these uh, adults they are not adults but the thing happened to them when they were kids so let me know what you guys think about this video and what he did is it right is it wrong we are all here to share our opinions and as always you can leave your opinions and your opinions only in the comment section we can all agree to disagree see you in the next one